Bernard Verkuhl and I are sitting up here in the organ loft um, talking to the camera and uh, you're watching us down there. <laughs> we can't see you and you can see us. Uh, but anyway, it's great to have you here and you will have a chance to have the insight of this wonderful musician and the music that he's going to be presenting this evening. So, welcome. Welcome, thank you. Thanks for making time for the concert tonight. I'd like to know, first of all, what it is of the work of Dietrich von Sumer that has so inspired you to dedicate so much of your career to. I think I, I was always fascinated by Stephen's music, by all the contrasts, and uh, they are, uh, this music speaks to us in an unbelievable way. Uh, it's very rich in uh, colorful contrast, I will show you an example of that. It's very rich in, in, in many sections. One piece, the first piece of the program tonight is called just Toccata, very easy. But when you look at it, it's like a patchwork of different sections that seems all quite different. If you look a little bit more with attention, you will see that very often there is a link between the different sections. So the unity is there, but the first impression is a fantastic contrast and a highly Baroque spirit. We do know that uh, he had great influence on Bach. Oh, we see some of uh, that influence in pieces that they both did. Uh, but I was also interested in the panel to see him and did one of your various daughters and all But uh, how did you position him in the music from going from Baroque to what we know as classical? Uh, we hear very often that Mr. Wood uh, was mainly the, the, the great predecessor of Bach. And I see it a little bit differently. I think that Buxter Wood is first of all the end, the climax of a great tradition of the 17th century, where organ, organ builders and, uh, and organists have put that art at, at the highest level possible. And in a certain sense, what Buxter Wood did was a sort of achievement of that, and Bach was certainly extremely impressed by that. But maybe because he knew uh, that it was difficult to go further, and also more important because his own nature is different and, and goes more in the sense of unity and coherence, he followed another path. But it's clear that when, Buster, when Bach was 20 years old, when he went to Quebec to spend a few months with Buxtehude, that meeting has probably been the, the the most exciting possible. You said that you would uh, give us examples of uh, how this music is contrasts. You have one that contrasts with the other. Uh, can you give us one of them? Yes, I, I will uh, play you a, a, a small excerpt of the first toccata, and you will hear a, a sort of a transition between, uh, in, between two, two main sections very soft and then again very solid, very strong. And within that strong section there, there are a lot of contrasts, rhythmical. It goes from two into three and there are silences and this is typical of the rhetorical aspect. So just a flavor of that toccata that starts the concert tonight. Okay, let's hear that and I'll ask you all
find a predecessor to Buxtehude, I suggest Fresco Barni, an Italian composer who already wrote in the first part of the century, 17th century, toccatas, a little in that spirit for the Harvard or the organ. So, quite different music, but in a certain way, a very profound link between South European and North European music. When you talk about the Israel and his ability to put style side by side, put in a, a bit of silence, what do you hear him say to you? I have the impression that this composer is very close, it is a sort of present within that silence and, and is suggesting a very big attention, you know, it takes us by the hand to, to go into his music and I'm very moved by that. Uh, you are going to uh, give us an idea of uh, the contrast between rock and the Buxtehude. You're playing um, a piece that is based on similar rules, but uh, both in an interpretation. Do you want to say that? Yes, I have selected two, two chorales. Uh, one is Dutch Adams, but it's Gans Vermeer. It's about the original scene. And uh, it's very interesting to see that the, what is common between Buxtehude and Bach and what is different. In this case, for the book, I will play at the beginning of the Buxtehude, and you will see that, like Bach, there is a strong weight, a, a sort of aspiration to the dark, you know, to the, 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 this, uh, the representation of the sin. And uh, I, I just saw at the very beginning, it's a very introverted chorale. And of course, that original scene is absolutely central in the, the, uh, the Christian religion, especially in the Lutheran uh, yes, uh, music and, and, and philosophy and theology. 